Hey everybody, it's Carrie with From Sea to Spoon. Um, my husband and I are the creators of the From Sea to Spoon mobile app, which helps walk you through um, over a hundred different fruits, vegetables, herbs, and how to grow them, and all, all specific for your location. Um, but anyways, if you've been following us at all on social media and here on YouTube, you can tell a lot has changed since we last recorded. It's been a few months, so hey again everybody. So here, as you can tell, the background is way different than what it used to be. So our old house, we just, we lived in a normal neighborhood and had a smaller backyard and we grew all of our food there. But now we've moved just outside the city so we can be on some acreage and we are loving it so far. So we just wanted to take a few minutes and just walk you through what we've done. So over here we have our garden area and we have everything in smart pots and believe it or not, absolutely nothing was here before we moved in. So I know it looks like a jungle in there right now. So it is really exciting. We have a lot growing and all of this soil actually came from our backyard in our old house and you should have seen us going back and forth with truckloads of dirt. But Smart Pots made it so easy because we just loaded up all of our Smart Pots, put them on the truck and brought them out here. So we've been so busy since we moved in and not even necessarily in the garden. We haven't done that much out here. We pretty much just planted it when we originally got here and just kind of let it run wild. We've been really lucky and had a lot of rain, so we haven't even had to water that much. So it's been amazing. So we have a lot of thing, different things growing right now. We have a bunch of peppers and herbs and we even have some kale still going and push her around here and um, we have tomatoes they are amazing and beans we like to trellis our beans so we have one trellis right here and then we actually have an arch trellis over here it's one of my favorite areas because we so we have the smart pots big bag long beds which are long and we have them in here sitting against the trellis and then we have this cattle panel arched over to another area of the big bag bed the long beds and we have beans growing up one side and then we have tomatillos growing up the other side so it is our first year growing tomatillos we've never tried it before and it has been amazing they have taken off like crazy and i i love the taste of tomatillos so it's been great so over here we have the jungle of our big bag beds, the smart pots, and we have a bunch of different things growing. I mean, we have the strawberries and I mean, gosh, I see everything out here. I mean, we have a bunch of squashes and melons and you name it, it's out here, I feel like. So over here in this big bag bed, we have a bunch of different um, sunflowers. We have one blooming right now, it's so pretty. So we have sunflowers and we're using those as actually our poles to help support these pole beans. So we have pole beans that we planted at the base of each sunflower and now they're they're growing up. And uh, so over here, um, again, it is a jungle back there. We have so many things growing, um, but we have a bunch of like beans back here that we really need to go through and harvest and pull some and peppers. And um, we have some okra growing over here as well. And uh, here, We'll be pulling a lot of this stuff here within like a month or so when we'll be planting more for the fall and growing our broccoli and cabbage, kale, spinach, all of that. So over here we have our blackberry bushes. So at our last house we had the huge wall of just solid blackberries and I loved them. It was probably my favorite thing to grow. So I was really sad to leave them, but we luckily were able to take some cuttings from the blackberry plants and we have planted them now in these smart pots and they are going up this trellis right now. So hopefully now within a year or two, we'll start to get some harvest from these blackberries. So over here, just in front of the garden, we have the main things that have been keeping us busy. You might be able to hear them coming in too. So we have a lot of our animals out here and I love the animals. I was so excited to move on to land so we could get first chickens. It wasn't against HOA anymore. And then we have a bunch of goats and sheep 
and more chicken and we have a couple pigs out there but we'll go and we'll we'll show you a few of of all of them so first of all whenever we moved out here i know we told you the garden nothing there same as out here we didn't have anything and we knew we wanted to get all these animals and we knew we had to have protection and some way to keep them confined so we discovered these um these electric fencing from premier one and they have been fantastic they're so easy to set up and i feel like the animals are very safe with it so yeah i love these things super easy to set up so over here we have my personal favorite chickens the silkies so um, and also we have one outcast, which she kept breaking out of her area that we had over there. So we moved her over here. So she is one of the, one of the friends also. So I say one of the friends because all of these silky chickens are named after friends characters. So we have Phoebe, Ross, Rachel, Joey, Chandler. We even have a Mike Hannigan, and we have Judy and Jack. We have all of them. So these chickens are fantastic because they are adorable, first of all, and they're really good with kids, and they give you all the benefits to having chickens. So they will give you eggs. Um, their eggs are a little smaller than normal, but. Um, they will give you eggs and they're also really good at like being what, broody so they sit on their eggs and they hatch them for us so we don't necessarily have to have their eggs in an incubator we can just hatch more chickens out here so this is basically what we like to call our nursery so they are going to be our parents and babysitters and grandparents all of that and we're going to take eggs from all of the chickens that we have everywhere around here and let them sit on them and give them life. Baby, come here. Joey? Okay. Got him. So this is Joey. He's one of our favorites. We love this guy. He's a good man. Okay, come here. Oh, what? They're talking to me now. Okay, so this is my favorite chicken area. And then over here, the next place we're gonna go to is the boy goat area. So in here, we have three different types of goats. Hi, Eeyore. So over here, we have the boy goat area. <laughs> Sorry, the goat is jumping into the camera, so it's cracking up. Um, anyways, we have the boy goat area over here, and also we have a couple sheep, we have a couple pigs, and more chickens too. So we have, hey, stop being my watch. So we have this guy, he's one of my favorites. I still love you though, yes. So this, this guy right here, he is a La Mancha goat. So his breed is known for having the sweetest milk that there is. So we got him so we could make some sweet milk. And then, then this guy right here, hey, yes, I'm still paying attention. These two right here, we have, oh, I didn't say his name, I'm sorry. This is Abu from Aladdin. So this is Eeyore, and then we have Piglet down here too. Um, they are Nigerian dwarfs. So he, I mean, he looks a little fat, but he uh, he's not gonna get much bigger. Hey, stop eating my shirt. They, uh, they're gonna stay real small, so they're really good for the kids. So they're real happy with the kids being in here. And they're super friendly, and they're fantastic, as you can see. And then, where did Michael Jackson go? Michael? Let's go show you Michael too. So over here we have Michael Jackson 
And we have Bill, who is underneath the hay over there. Michael, come say hi. So he is a, um, a Nubian. So his breed, um, he's going to get quite a bit bigger. Um, so he is known for, not the boys, but the girl Nubians are known for having a lot of milk. So we'll show you the girl Nubians we have here in a little bit. That's the one we're actually milking. And we do get quite a bit of milk from her. So, so Michael right here, he is not fixed. So he is going to be a daddy, hopefully at some point soon. And then over here, his friend over here, Bill, we have him, he's called a weather because he is fixed and he can't have babies. So it's always good for the boys to have kind of like a friend that they can hang out with. And especially during that season where the babies are going to be coming and it'll help because they won't fight as much and they'll still have a friend and they won't be lonely. So we have a bunch of chicken that are free ranging around here. They sleep over here at night, but um, during the day we let them out and about and they just go around, eat a bunch of ticks and bugs and I mean, they're great to have around. So. Um, back here in this back area, we have Buttons and Kiddo. They are girls, so they're separated because we can't keep them with the boys. So they are visiting this area today from their normal home. And they are super, super great at clearing things out. So whenever we first moved in, I know we told you there was not much anywhere over there. Well, there was a lot over here but it was a lot of like nothing usable. So we had overgrown trees and shrubs and bushes and weeds and grass. And I mean, it was like up to here on me. So we uh, just put a fence around this, let the goats in, they ate everything. And so I mean, you can kind of see throughout, you can actually see the street now over there, which you couldn't before. So it's pretty great. Goats do good work. So this is Charlotte, and then we also have Daisy and Donald, the ducks, over here. So Charlotte is a potbelly pig. We actually adopted her from um, the local animal shelter. So she's been fantastic. She eats everything. They don't call her a pig for, for nothing. So she's been fantastic. We just give her everything we have left over. I don't feel wasteful at all anymore. So before when we threw away food, I would feel so bad, but now it all goes for a purpose. How are you doing? You wanna play? She likes playing ball. <laughs> yeah, pigs are so smart. They're amazing. Bye Charlotte. We'll see you later. <laughs> Still playing with the ball. So one of the main reasons we wanted the pig in the first place was so that way they could go through and it's called rooting. So they'd root up the ground and get it prepared for gardens for us. So before, like it was super hard to actually stake these into the ground and they're just a single stake going in, just like a tent stake. And we couldn't get them in. That's how hard the ground was. So now Charlotte's going through, she's working up the ground and making it ready. And we got a big pile of compost delivered over there. So. She's going through and she's making new garden areas for us. Over here we have Peppa and Penelope the pigs. And then Bill's going in there too because he's just has to be on camera, I guess. And then we have Sam Bradford, the ram over there. And then we have Ma, the other sheep, the mama sheep. And uh, so we have the little tiny pigs. We got them as babies. They were one month old when we got them. Where'd they run off to? They're running in the sunflowers somewhere out there. That's one of their favorite spots. They go in there and we're like, where did they go? And then they come running out when they see this water come out because they love the water. They love the mud pit. So, um, but they are still super tiny, but they are mini pigs. So they're gonna be, I think their parents were only like 60, 70 pounds at the most. So they're gonna be super small, they're sisters. So we're gonna have have a lot of fun though with them. They're super sweet and they're great. So whenever we first brought Peppa and Penelope home, 
we had a little area over here built for them where we laid down cattle panels. And I told Dale, I said, I think they can squeeze right out of that. And he still wanted to try. <laughs> <laughs> and we put them in there. Lo and behold, they went darting right out <laughs> straight towards that area out there where you can see it's like dense forest. So we couldn't even like hardly get in there. We're in there like climbing over trees, like trying to get through and searching for them. And they are fast. So every time we would even get close and try to get them, they would just dart somewhere else. So, oh man, it was a fiasco. So they were out for a couple days actually, whenever we first got them. And we have a bunch of ring cameras around our house and they kept going off and alarming and we would see them just eating right out front in our garden. And then, oh, there they are in the backyard. And we just saw them everywhere, but we could never catch them. So finally, they got to be really good friends with Sam and Ma over here. And they're always hanging with the sheep. They love the sheep. So eventually they got to be good friends with them within a couple days. And then we managed to build a fence around them. So it worked out. We have them, everything's all good now. <laughs> So I didn't mention why we liked having the sheep around. So the goats are really good with like the weeds and the shrubs and things like that. Whereas the sheep here are really good at, um, at eating grass and things like that. So they keep our backyard nice and trimmed down. And you can see Peppa's over there digging in the mud. It's so cute when she does it. She's over there rooting and digging up, searching for food. Say hi to everybody. Oh, thank you. That's sweet love. So this guy, I didn't tell his story. So he is a sweetie, but so, um, somebody rescued him and um, at a swamp meet and found him there. And he was all skin and bones and um, found him on Facebook. She was posting about him asking for help because she didn't have any goats. So I offered to help him out and we bottle fed him and nursed him back to health. And whenever he got him, he had pneumonia real bad. So we had to give him a bunch of antibiotics. And then he got a lump on the side of his jaw, which the vet was thinking could be super serious. And so we were devastated. And then we got the great news, like a few weeks after that, that he was good and clear. And now he's happy as could be. He's happy and healthy. He's a great guy. So we used to have these IBC totes at our old house. We used them as rainwater collection. So here we've been using them um, kind of just more like storage of water. And also we release this at least once a day. So that way the pigs have a water source, the chickens love it too. Um, so we let a lot of water out and then throughout the day it'll dry up so it's not soaking wet at night time. Um, but that way they have a good source of water. Pigs love to play in the mud. And it helps to root up and get the, get the ground all good and ready for gardens. I know that some people have been worried and asking us questions about if we are gonna eat some of these animals. So we love our animals very much. So none of these animals you saw today will ever get eaten by us or anybody. Um, we love them too much, but they are working animals. They work for us. So. That's how they pay their room and board. So they, uh, the goats are doing a great job at clearing out areas for gardens and the sheep are mowing for us. Pigs are rooting it up, getting it all ready for gardens. I mean, everybody works together towards a common goal of turning all of this into gardens soon. And then once we have gardens set up here, we'll move the animals down a little bit and have them clear out more areas. And we'll just kind of keep rotating because they leave behind great fertilizer too. So we'll just kind of keep rotating them all around and where our gardens are each year. And uh, yeah, it'll make for some really good soil. So back here we have, 
Oh, they're excited to see us too. They're yelling. Oh my goodness. Hi guys. So these are more of our, our girl goats. So we have Jasmine. Hello. We have Jasmine. We have Lisa Marie. So Jasmine is going to have babies with Abu and Lisa Marie is going to have babies with Michael Jackson. So, and then we have back here. So we have Delilah right here and Miss Lily, who we actually, oh, where is she right here? We just got Lily and Delilah yesterday. So over here, we also have our llamas. So we have Winamp and Braveheart. He also goes by Winnie. So um, we got these llamas actually to help with our goats. So llamas are supposed to be super great at protecting animals. So whenever they see anything that is out of the ordinary or something they think is dangerous, they will start letting out this warrior cry, which is why he's Braveheart. And it, it helps us know that there's a predator. And then they also have been known to like stomp on, like if there was a coyote in here that tried to come in here and attack them, they could stomp on them and protect the other goats. So we keep them in here to help protect our baby girls. So these are our two new goats. We just got Lily and Delilah yesterday. So she is a, um, a Nigerian dwarf which is the same as a couple that we have over there. So this is as big as she's gonna get. So she's a small little girl, but she will have super sweet milk whenever she has her babies. Okay, so I know we said earlier that we aren't going to eat any of our animals and that is true for the most part. And so viewer discretion is advised. If you don't wanna fall in love with them, don't look. So these are the chickens that we are going to eat. So how, I feel about this it's very hard but I feel like if I'm going to eat chicken I would much rather raise them in a happy and healthy environment where I know they're having a good life as opposed to when I buy a chicken you know so I I feel better about doing this although it's still really sad about it I'm gonna make Dale do it but anyways so these are all of our meat chickens um, they are bred just for that reason. They grow nice and good and plump. And then we also have in here a couple of our little baby ducks um, because they they would get out of this netting over here. So we're waiting until they're just a little bit bigger so we can put them over there with Daisy and Donald. So, um, so yeah, that's the story over here. Um, Dale actually built this. Um, he made it just from two by fours and hardware. What was it? Hardware cloth. Hardware cloth, yeah. I was there for it, but I t he had to buy everything and do it all. So I just helped hold the pieces together. So it was a good team effort, I feel like. So <laughs> we did a good job on it. So um, this thing, it's great because we can just rotate this around. So we have a dolly over here that we just lift up right here and we just kind of roll it down whenever we want to move it. We usually move it every day or two just so they have fresh area to eat from and yeah, have so we just moved them from over here this morning so as you can see i mean they've eaten quite a bit of the grass they've also gone through and fertilized a lot so their poop is really good fertilizer too for gardens and things like that so they'll help they're helping to prep the ground too and chickens eat a lot of grasshoppers so we have a huge grasshopper problem but they are taking care of a lot of them. So these chickens surprisingly are usually ready for harvest at about eight weeks. So we're gonna try going on just a rotation of chickens and so that way we have a constant flow of chickens in the kitchen and um, in the freezer too. So we'll be storing them that way as well. So whenever we make a whole chicken, I always make mine in the Instapot because it's super fast, super easy. And I, uh, 
I just like the way it works. So we always cook a whole chicken in the Instapot. And then once it's done, we do, um, we make broth from them, from those bones. And then after we cook it really well, the bones just crumble and we give what we have left there to our dogs. So we feel super resourceful that we are using like every inch of it and uh, feeding our animals and ourselves at the same time. Um, if you want to check out any of those recipes, you can check them out on our website um, at seedtospoon.net in case you don't know what it is. Um, so yeah, I mean, this is what we've been working on and where we've been for the past couple of months. So now that we are more moved in to the house and to the land, we'll be starting to make some more videos. So be on the lookout for more garden videos and more fun animal videos as well. If you don't already follow us on Facebook or Instagram, um, make sure you follow us and at From Seed to Spoon. And uh, we're posting every day goat pictures, pig pictures, just cute things. So it's fun. And of course, if you don't have our app, download it today to help walk you through how to grow over a hundred different fruits, vegetables, herbs. You can find it in the app store by searching either from seed to spoon or gardening. It should be the top result with gardening.